What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our YH Studio. This is Sam as always. And today we're taking a look at how to make this super clean resume template in InDesign. We'll go through it step by step. Let's get started. So if you haven't watched my previous video on resumes right here, then I would suggest taking a look because I talk a little bit about what to do in your resume and what to stay away from. We also take a look at under design and over design resumes just so you are hitting the sweet spot with what you're trying to do with your resume. This video will build on that and will continue to create a beautifully crafted and beautifully formatted resume in InDesign. All right, now that we're here in InDesign, we're gonna go ahead and change this to inches. Uh, everything here looks to be good. Make sure it's just one page because we're just creating one resume. For margins, we're gonna use a 0.5 or half an inch margin and just hit create there. This is gonna bring up a document for us. And the first thing we're gonna do is create some guides, layouts, create guides. And this time we want three columns and I'm going to just click that. The important thing here is we want the gutters to be high for this one. So I'm changing this to something like a 3.14 Two, five, something like that. We want it to be a little bit larger and I'll show you guys why. So for this resume, we want to create something over here to section off the two partitions. This is a style that I see very often, um, but people like to put pictures here, which again, I feel like is not the best idea. So here we're going to use the some of the Pantone colors. I feel like they're pretty easy to do. We're just gonna go ahead and click on here and I'm just gonna go ahead and do something pretty easy. Uh, so here, if we want one of the grays, now we wanna pick like a darker gray or a darker color. This is up to your preference, uh, but maybe something like mm, these two. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you, you definitely want something that's a lot darker on the side because you want to put text that is white. Uh, so you essentially need it to read. Now, the first thing we're going to do is write our name. So if my name is John Smith, John, and then Smith, we're going to write justify. And for this one, use your favorite font. Some of the fonts that I like to use are Sophia, as you guys know. Um, Futura is a good font, Lato is a good font, so look into those. Let me know which font you guys like to use in the comment, comment section. Uh, but those are definitely solid ones that you can use, Helvetica as well. And this one we're going to change to something big, like 60. And like I mentioned in my last video, I like to make the top or the first name into like a lighter, and then the bottom or the last name into something like bold, just so it's, it reads a little bit better and it reads a little bit clearer that this is who you're dealing with. Okay, great, so that is our name, done and done, easy. Next, we're going to create another text box over here. And for this one, we're going to be writing things like profile, uh, if you want. If you have more experience, feel free to ignore this profile section. But again, we're changing this to the same font that we're using. So for me, it's gonna be Sophia Pro, and we're gonna make this uh, a bold. So we're gonna use three different types or three different sizes for our text on this page. One is 14, one is 10, and one is 12. So for these subheadings, we wanna be using the biggest one, which is 14. And this will basically be as big as the body text gets. So for example, this is profile and I'm just gonna have something here um, just as a filler text. So if I go ahead and fill it with placeholder text, make sure again that this is in your font. So Futura Pro. But the thing is we want to make sure that this doesn't overpower anything else. So we're going to make this into a light font and we're also going to make this into 10. And in addition to that, what I, found to be the most useful and shows the most hierarchy on your resume is if we make this lighter. Now you can do this other ways by changing the color manually. I just found that it's easier if we just change it to a 50% opacity. So that looks a lot better and reads a lot better than if we had this in black. Whoa, pause. Let's take a look at this graph. Help me out. Subscribe. Okay, after we get done with the profile, we're just copying this over, highlight everything, not that. Uh, we're gonna use Alt to copy everything. Make sure that you leave ample white space in between the two. And again, as I mentioned, if you don't have, uh, or if you have too much experience, if you have a lot of experience you wanna write down, then you can ignore the profile section and this whole thing can just be experiences. So we're going to type experience here and I'm going to drag this down and just copy the sub title there. Uh, and then we're going to change this to basically reflect whatever we have. So if I was an architectural designer 
at uh, big group, which is not true. Uh, I can write that. So the thing with this is it's going to read. Uh, so the thing with this is it's going to read very similar to our experiences font. So what we want to do is make this into something smaller so that it doesn't overpower what we're trying to divide the sections into. So there we go. We have that as our title for this architectural work experience. And then we're going to copy that down and we're going to make something that is a lot smaller. So for example, if I worked here, um, June, 2020 to July, 2021, I'm also going to put the duration because I feel like people really, uh, enjoy or they appreciate when you actually put that. So this for me is one year and one month, go ahead and change this into something smaller as well. So we're going to make this into a light font and a 10. And we're also going to change the opacity similar to what we do with the body text to 50. Now you can italicize this as well. I just find that if we don't italicize this, it actually looks uh, a little bit better. Uh, make sure that you are adjusting these so that it makes sense. You want the experience or duration to go right under the title of your position. So down here, obviously you want to write things like what you did, what you were responsible for, be as specific as you can. People really look for that stuff. If we want to do this in bullet form, we can do that too. So make sure you click into the text box and then hit enter to have a new line. Here I have the paragraph pulled up already. This is the paragraph tab. If you guys don't have this, go into window, down to types and labels, paragraph, and then here in the four lines on the top right, we're going to go into bullet and numbering. We're going to change the list type to bullets. This is the bullet type that we want. It's just a simple dot. Obviously you can change this. And what you can do is click preview so that you get this little dot on the page. And we can actually have a lot of flexibility with this thing. We can make the left indent or the right indent, whatever your alignment is. Uh, we can change that and preview what that is on the page. We can also, you know, do the first line indents. We can do a tab position. This is how far the text appears from your actual dot. Uh, we're going to leave it like that. That looks pretty good. Now these two are a little bit close together. If we want them to be a little bit further apart, we can change what is called the spacing in between the lines. And right now it's on auto. It's probably at a 10, 14 ish. We can actually make this into something like an 18 or even like a 24. And that'll give us a little bit of an indent here. And the great thing about this, uh, as opposed to if we hit enter is it allows us to change the distance here. So we're not, uh, we're not confined to just the space of the enter. So next we're going to be doing things like recognition and awards. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy, uh, this section and again, dragging it down, make sure you leave plenty of white space between the sections. So here we're going to do recognition, recognition and awards, right? If you have publications, if you have uh, speaker events, this is where you're going to put that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that body text. We don't really need that here. We just want to highlight our achievements. So if we, you know, have a gold medal from a competition, you can put that in. If you're a speaker somewhere, you can put that in. Feel free to also put in some of the text as to what you did or what kind of value you generated. So let's do that. Great. After we've done that, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and zoom out. You can see that the bottom is a little bit tight. We're a little bit over the margin. Let's see if we can free some space up and maybe we'll drag this whole thing up just so everything is within the margins. And that already looks a lot better. Another thing that I noticed guys is that this is reading a little bit dark. So what we're going to do is change this into something that is not bald. So we're actually going to make all of these light just so it's not taking away from the overall hierarchy of the entire resume. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you're going to see that it already looks a lot better. Now, what we want to do here is basically zoom out and really assess what we are missing. If it's white space on the outside, then we adjust something like that. If it's things like this being too bold and taking away from the rest of the resume, then we have to adjust that. But 
Um, just adjust it according to what your resume looks like because it's not going to be laid out the exact same way as mine is. Hey you, yes, you. If you're watching this channel, I know you're already pretty cool and I know you're a creative individual that's probably looking to step up your game in your craft, which is great. So maybe it's time to start thinking about getting an Adobe Suite or Adobe Creative Cloud subscription and not renewing the trial for the ninth time. The great thing about getting a Creative Cloud subscription is that you get all of the great programs in one bundle on one platform. You get things like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, all in the same place. And it's always updated, so you always have the greatest and latest for all of the leading edge design softwares in the industry. There's also always promotional deals for students, educators, as well as businesses. So make sure to check those out. And if you want to support the channel, I left a link down in the description if you want to make that commitment and uh, purchase a Creative Cloud subscription. On the left side is going to be a little bit easier, I hope. But what we're going to do is just select this rectangle that we made. To make it easier, I'm going to create a new layer and just move it onto that layer. This layer should be on the bottom of what we were just working in. And I'm just going to click this beside the little eye to lock it so that we can't select this square anymore. That'll make working with it a lot easier. Sorry, not square, rectangle. So over here, we're going to do things like contacts, education, and skills. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these two over like that. Make sure we know where the margin is. There we go, perfect. So that's going to be right there and we're going to shorten this so that it's got the same kind of 0.5 margin on this side as well, just eyeball that. And we're going to make this into a color that we can actually see. Paper works great because our paper is actually white. Same thing here, we're changing the fill to paper. And because this is already at 50% fill, we don't really need to change it. It's going to be pretty good by itself. So populate your contact information over here. Okay, now that we have typed that in, it looks a little bit squished. What we're gonna do is go ahead and highlight everything. And since it's in two, or sorry, 10 point font, a good rule of thumb is to make the spacing between the different lines double. So we're gonna do double space here and just so that it's not looking all squished. So that already looks a lot better, but you'll notice that my address here is also double space. We don't want that. So for the second, second line here, we're going to highlight it and adjust this so that it is auto so that that line is not double spaced. So here, we also want to adjust San Francisco. We don't really want a hyphenation there. And again, make this auto and we should be golden. Okay, under contact, we're doing education. So I'm copying this over and down. Now, if we can make it have the same position as the profile or on this side, that's great. If that doesn't work out, don't worry about it. It's not too much of a big deal. So here we are doing education. So we're filling in the education here, but we're gonna go ahead and copy these guys over because we want to also use the font and the size for this. But again, we're going to be changing this into a white as well as this into a white. So here we wanna make sure to adjust this. And what we're gonna do is basically have uh, the name of the degree that you obtain. So if I have a master's of architecture, I can put that over here. Sometimes it looks better if you make this into two different rows like that. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and type out where we got it from. So for example, if it's Harvard University, which again, not true for me, uh, we can put that. Make sure the spacing is correct and make sure that this gets a little bit of space from the contact. Similar to what we have up here. This is not going to be contact, but rather education. Great. And then anything else you want to write, we can have another row of text here. And for example, we can put the things like the duration. So if it's, you know, uh, June, 2020 to July, 2021, we can put that. And if you got any awards, uh, you can put that as well. So if I have honors with the distinction, you can put that over here as well. All right, now that we're done with that, we're going to do the same thing. Copy this all the way down so that we have a new section. This section is going to be skills. So I'm going to type that in. And our software skills is very important for any job in this time uh, or age where everything is very digital. So 
like I mentioned in a previous video, we're going to be doing this in this format. So we're going to highlight the skills and the different years of experience that we have rather than doing those graphical bars or pie charts. This gives people a way better sense of how much expertise you have in one of these um, softwares. Great, now that we have populated our skill section, it's again going to be a process of taking a look and zooming out and seeing what kind of spaces or what kind of formatting you can do to make this look a little bit better. So one of the first things I can see is if we just change this text and make it a little bit more centered and give the top and bottom a lot more white, or in this case, gray space, it's going to look a lot better. So these two sections are a little bit close as well. So I might be dragging contact up a little bit just to see how that looks. That looks pretty good. The point is we want to play around with what we have on the page so that it looks good, nice, coherent, and it's breathable. So that's the end of the video. I hope you guys have learned something new. If you did, please don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Make sure you leave your comments down in the comments section below with uh, any questions. I'll make sure to get to those. I'm working on a website to post a lot of these so that everybody has access to them. So watch out for that. It'll be in the description. And with that, thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.